guys, welcome back to another episode of Handlebar ASMR. This episode, I'm actually going to tell you the legend of Balder. It's a Norse mythology, and I know me personally, I was really into Greek mythology, and I know a lot of the stories and everything like that, but I never really read a lot of Norse mythology. And like many of you who may play video games, uh, I got really interested in it when I played God of War. And uh, one of the cool characters that I always liked was Balder. So I wanted to know what his backstory was. So today, that's what we're going to do. I'm going to give you the story of Balder. But first, I'm going to get me some coffee and cookies because... I want to. Kind of looks like somebody, doesn't it? So, 
first thing I am going to say is I'm probably going to mispronounce some of the names and places in this story. I apologize in advance, and if I do, drop me a line and tell me what the actual pronunciation of these words are. I really appreciate that. But without further ado, the story of Baldur. Odin, the king of the Norse gods, often sat upon Hildskalf, the throne of the Asir gods, with his companions, two ravens, Hugin, Thought, and Munin, memory whispering in his ears. From this position, he could look out on all of the nine worlds. Sometimes his wife Frigg would sit there too but she was the only other god who was so privileged. Frigg was the second and favorite wife of Odin, whose daughter she may have also been, because that's what the gods did, guys. They couldn't keep it in their pants. She was the only Asir as clever and knowledgeable about the future as Odin, although her foreknowledge did not depress her as it did her husband. Frigg had her own palace, which was known as Vinsalir, where she sat spinning clouds to float above Midgard. Vinsalir also served as the afterlife home for married couples who wished to be together. It was the counterpart to the famous home of the valiant warriors of Valhalla, where Odin spent much of his time drinking and feasting with and fighting with companions and the Valkyries. The most handsome of the gods was born to Frigg and Odin. He was named Baldr. He was the god of truth and light. Baldr was also knowledgeable in healing herbs and runes, which made him a favorite among the people of Midgard. Baldr lived in a palace named Breldiplik. 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 With his wife, Nana, a vegetation goddess. This is the Breldiplik. the sun. 
son of a giant hadn't been known as such. It was just Loki's self-appointed job to stir things up when everything was going too good. That's pretty much what Loki did. <laughs> but Loki was disturbed by all the gaiety and decided to do something about it. So in disguise, as a disgusting old hag, he went to Frigg while she was at Fensalir, <laughs> taking a break from the festivities. What's going on at Gladsheim? He asked her. She said it was a celebration of the god Balder. Loki, in disguise, asked why then were people throwing weapons at him. Frigg explained about the promises she had extracted. Loki kept her asking questions until she finally revealed that there was one thing she hadn't asked because she thought it was too trivial and small and inconsequential to care about. The one thing was mistletoe. With all the information he needed, Loki set off to the forest to get himself a branch of mistletoe. He then returned to the festivities at Gladsheim and sought out Baldur's blind brother, Hod, god of darkness, who was in the corner because he hadn't, he couldn't aim, because he couldn't see, and therefore he couldn't participate in the test of Baldur's, in Baldur's invulnerability. Loki told Hod he would help him take aim and handed Hod a piece of apparently innocuous mistletoe to throw. Hod was grateful and accepted the offer, so Loki steered his arm. Hod la launched the branch, which caught Balder in the chest. Balder died instantly. The gods looked toward Hod and saw Loki standing beside him, but before they could do anything, Loki fled away, as Loki often does. Celebration turned to lamentation, since the most beloved of the gods died. But Odin, Odin alone was aware of how disastrous this event really was for all of the gods, because he knew that with the, lot, the loss of Lot and Truth, the end of the world, Ragnarok, Ragnarok had started. A funeral pyre was made, so, so enormous that the gods had to ask the giants for help. They then placed their most valuable worldly possessions as gifts upon the par. Odin placed his golden armband, drum beer. Balder's wife fell down dead from grief at the par, so her body was placed beside her husband's. The anguished gods then ordained that one of them should go to the underworld and see if there was any way that Balder could be retrieved from the clutches of the death goddess Hel. That's H-E-L. Hermod, another of Odin's many sons, agreed to make the journey, and mounting Odin's steed, Slipnir, Slipnir, like I said, let me know, he rode down the world tree until he came to its dark and damp roots where hell's abode was. When he arrived, he found his brother pale and grim sitting in the seat of honor next to hell. <laughs> Hermod implored the dreadful goddess to release Balder, and after much persuasion she replied that she would give him up, and only if everything in the world would weep for Balder, to prove, in other words, that he was universally beloved as Hermod claimed. The whole world did indeed weep for the generous son of Odin, all that is save one creature. The giantess Thok generally assumed to be Loki in disguise. That Loki callously refused to perform the act that would secure Balder's return. And so Balder was doomed to remain with him. 
and splendor in the hearts and minds of the Vikings and probably other Germanic peoples as well. And that, folks, is the legend of Balder. And this, folks, is another cookie. Subscribe. 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 Subscribe.